As Bob showed us, the markets are moving on every bit of news, so will there be a compromise to talk about that on Capitol Hill? Senator John Hoven, a Republican from North Dakota, also the former governor of that state. Senator Hoven, welcome. Good to see you here. Tyler, good to be with you. You know, we just talked about how uh, the markets, investors, and the public are watching everything you guys are saying here, probably right. watching what you're saying right now. Right. Are you aware how closely they're watching and how sensitively they're acting and reacting? I think so. Look, uh, we need to get uh, a big deal. It's very important that we avert the fiscal cliff and that we do it by not only getting pro-growth tax reform, but entitlement reform and better spending control and get the kind of deal in the $4 trillion range uh, that's going to provide certainty and get our economy going because ultimately we need to get people back to work and it's that growing economy that's going to create the revenue that gets us out of the deficit. A four trillion dollar deal would be your goal. You talked about revenue. I'm mm -hmm. going to talk about it in a moment. But sure. I want to focus on maybe something that, that hasn't been talked about as All much right. and that is entitlement reform. Right. If you And the big one here would be Medicaid and especially Medicare. Medicare. Mm -hmm. If you had to tell your Democrat colleagues here is the one reform that I think you should make to Medicare to reduce the growth and expenditure there. What would it be? Would it be increasing the eligibility age? Would it mean uh, that the wealthy have to pay more? What would it be? Look, there's any number of those things we can do, but here's how you do it. You say to people that are at or near retirement, we're not going to change it for you. But for Sounds younger fair. people, younger people, they want to change. They'll support it because we've got to make sure these entitlement programs are solvent both now and for the future. So I believe we can come together in a bipartisan way and do this. And it's got to be part of a package in order to get the job done. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more on that because the history of American workers over the past 25 years is that we have adjusted to reduced benefits benefits to changes in our benefits plans if we're given time to get used to it. Let's talk about defense cuts. Okay. This is an area too, uh, as uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Bowles says, uh, we spend more on defense than the next 16, 17 countries uh, combined. What defense program would you be willing to see cut? I know there are sensitive issues in your state about sure. the nuclear arsenal there, uh, even some transport planes that, uh, that the Air Force would say, we can do without, but you support. What would you see cut there? Well, I think we can look at some of our overseas bases and some of those kind of things. I think there are areas we can find savings. But remember, under the Budget Control Act, we've already reduced spending on the military by half a trillion dollars, which is why I don't support the sequestration. I think we can find savings in a good, solid, sound, prudent way. But let's go through and prioritize, mm -hmm. whether it's the military or anything else. And again, we've already made a commitment to reductions in the military through the the Budget Control Act. All right, let's talk a little bit about revenues. Uh, one of the guys who's at the heart of this whole debate is a man named Grover Norquist. Did you sign the Grover Pledge? No, I did not. I, you know, I was a governor for 10 years. I've got a long track record of not only holding the line on taxes, but reducing taxes. And I believe that we have too much, you know, at the national level, too much taxation, too much regulation. But no, I, I did not sign the pledge. Let me let me ask you about the, the idea that revenues are on the table, as the speaker okay. has said. I, I'm curious what that really means. Does that, does that signal a willingness on the part of the GOP to see some people's taxes go up? Or does it mean that the revenue increases will derive from economic growth and that those are the only revenue increases that, that the GOP is willing to accept? Speaker Boehner and Republicans are reaching out to the administration. Uh, Speaker Banner has said we'll put revenue on the table, not through higher tax rates, but through closing loopholes and limiting deductions. Okay, that accomplishes exactly what the administration has demanded. But that means somebody's taxes will go up. Sure, if you, you close loopholes and deductions, we will. We'll make sure rates don't go up, so you don't impact small business, so you don't uh, impact middle class Americans who are, you know, mm -hmm. uh, obviously are struggling to to get going and get right. back to work and get our economy going, but. By by closing those loopholes, your higher income people will effectively pay more. So All that right. accomplishes what President Obama is asking for. Now he has to reach back and say, yes, we're going to find some savings to truly ad address Senator the Hoban, deficit. I, I know you're aware of our Rise Above campaign on CNBC. Absolutely. Here is a button. We hope you will wear it proudly. This is a North Dakota edition of Power Lunch. Uh, your colleague from the Democrat side will join us uh, later this hour. Tyler, uh, great uh, to be with Conrad, you. Nice to meet you, sir. Yeah. Sue?